Hi, my beautiful people. Oh my God, it's been so long, but I'm back again with another How to Witch series episode. This is Hikate Honey, and I want to talk today about how to choose which deities or goddesses or gods or God or, you know, um, important spiritual figure uh, you choose to honor, to follow, to worship. Um, it's a very personal decision. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my story. And hopefully that helps you go on to your path of how to choose a deity. Um, or whoever of all the things I named previously. So when I was a little baby witch as a teenager... I was looking, I know I had been, you know, my, some of my family is religious and I had, they were Catholic actually. And, uh, and you know, I love Catholicism. I love the ritual. I love the saints and Jesus and God and all those and Mary, especially Mary Magdalene. Um, but I felt like religion was kind of leaving out the feminine aspect. And so um, as I had delved more down my path of witchiness and um, that kind of more pagan spirituality, I really just started looking for different goddesses. Um, you know, and there were the ones that were more popular, like um, Breed or... Um, who was a more popular one at the time? Like Diana or Astara. Uh, those were the more popular or Artemis, you know, like moon goddesses that I know a lot of um, witches had subscribed to their, say, their properties, their beliefs, their, um, the understanding of them um, back then. And uh, I'm not exactly sure how I came to Hecate. I know that in my research, she just kept coming up. And, um, and I, I found this later that, um, Hecate does for followers or, um, acolytes of Hecate that she presents herself to them and, um, to us. And she just kept coming up in all my research. And also she is the goddess of witches. So, you know, uh, that was really important to me. And she was also just like this divine feminine who had multiple aspects to her. She was like a Trinity, you know, with the three faces and, um, you know, she had certain properties, like she kind of, um, reigned over all the in between the liminal spaces. She would, you know, uh, there was the underworld part of her and then, you know, the other world part of her. And I just felt like such a connection to her and to that idea of the in-between because I, I always felt an in-between person. I felt like I was never a black and white person. Like I didn't fit here exactly, but I also didn't fit here. And uh, even with like my culture, like I'm, my mother is, you know, like Irish and German, like white, and my, my father is Hispanic, you know, uh, Mexican and Spanish. And so there was e an, even a liminality between my cultures. And, um, and so that was something that just really appealed to me about her. Also just the dark element really appealed to me because there is a certain amount of darkness in my being, um, that I've embraced and acknowledged. And it, 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 it corresponds really well with my, light. And, um, and so what I did was I, I did a lot of research on her and, uh, I started worshiping her among other things, because at that time I was still, um, subscribing to kind of a monotheistic Christian background and prayers as well. But I started incorporating her in my prayers and doing rituals to her separate from my Christian upbringing. <laughs> Sorry, my cat started fighting. Um, and I don't know, there's just like such a wonderful opening up of oneself when you're, you kind of work to become more your own person. And especially as a young woman, I wanted a fierce, strong, feminine deity. Um, and she's definitely fierce and just 
uh, you know, like um, uh, there's a lot more talk now about, say, feminine rage and how um, in the past it hasn't really been depicted or represented for what it is. It's more like mania or hysteria or oh, you know, we're so emotional, but really there's like a deep rage within women. And it's because we feel things so deeply, um, as life bringers, as, you know, womb holders, as, um, like we work within the liminal spaces, the in-betweens bringing life forth right out of, out of nothing. And, um, and not nothing, you know, I didn't, it's just what I said. Uh, but, you know, there's, there, that was what I was looking for, a divine feminine. And, um, and then later I started incorporating more deities into the fold um, that aligned with my own beliefs and, um, you know, added in rituals for them. Or then I would re do research on specific deities that corresponded to the Sabbath or to the season or to specific occurrences in my life, you know, um, different times in my life when I needed a more warristic, um, feminine divine or, um, or even like a divine ideal masculine. And that's when I adopted like Horus and, um, it was really interesting to me to do that. And, um, I feel them deep in my soul and part of my tribe now, which I feel very lucky and blessed to have that, to have those connections with those deities. And, uh, and even over the years, I've made friends again with, you know, the old, um, my previous say Christian deities of like Jesus or, um, like God, even though my God is my group of divinities, G O D. Um, and I've done a lot of research, say on Mary Magdalene, uh, one of my next trips I want to take is to the South of France, where there's a tomb specifically to her, where she is said to have traveled and, um, and just walk the paths of these different deities. Um, and even like with my experiences with Horus, he's, he's one, he's a Egyptian God, you know, the, the, the Falcon, the Hawk Falcon. I think Falcon. Anyway, um, I just like my brain went psh, for a second there, but, um, like I've had mystical divine deep visions and experiences with Horus and, uh, and I know, so I had to bring him into the fold and, and to me, he's, he's kind of a divine counterpart for me of the masculine and, uh, you know, there is masculine and feminine in us all. So he, I kind of have taken him in as my, my masculine for myself and kind of a figurehead for my own masculine divinity. And then I have like Hecate, who is my more feminine divinity within myself. And, um, I don't know. I just feel really blessed to have that connection with these deities. And, and the way for you to find yours is, um, definitely like meditation helps and asking your guides to lead you to these divinities or asking, you know, the divinities themselves to present them to you. Um, definitely, uh, rituals. You can do rituals to help you find your deities. Um, even just like mini rituals, like, you know, Samhain is coming up, which is the, um, the witch's new year. And, uh, it's a very important time in this, in this, the wheel of the year where the veil between the worlds is thin and you can make these connections with, um, entities. Of course, my first rule of thumb always is protection. And so if you haven't, uh, learned how to protect yourself in sacred and spiritual places, and rituals definitely go back to one of those videos. That's one of my earlier vi videos and um, learn how to protect yourself first and foremost, because there's a lot of weird, sh weird shit going on out there right now. Um, so definitely protect yourself. But in the rituals, like go ahead and ask these deities to present themselves to you or read on, read up on them and see which ones you feel akin to, um, read about their properties, read about their stories, read about what they, um, are rulers over. And, uh, and I hope you find who you're aligned with on your journey. And if you have any other questions, you know, go ahead and you can hit me up here, uh, leave a message, uh, definitely like subscribe and, uh, follow me. Uh, for more videos on how to witch 
And uh, thanks so much. And again, this is Hecate, honey. Have a great night.